2020 was a year of fear and chaos. 2020 had one of the largest protest movements in history. In reaction to it, we got to see how violent police can really get. Provoking riots, shooting people in the face with rubber bullets, tear gassing people, hitting people with cars. One of the moments that really stuck out to me in 2020 was hearing a clip from someone who was listening over a police scanner and the cops were talking about hitting people with their cars like it was a like it was a game like it was funny another cop basically came on the air and told them not to discuss that over the radio and it's things like that that really informed my decision to make my first EP assimilate came out in September of 2020 and basically for that, I was just so angry. I was so tired. I grew up not really knowing anything, being very naive. And then over the course of like a year and a half, it was like everything was completely out in the open again. And so I made I made my EP and I just didn't care about rules. I, I didn't care about song structure. I didn't care about recording techniques. I just went for it. I made it in like two or three weeks and I released it all myself. And basically right away, I got working on my next project. That project is this, this being Fear Mongrel. It's a 10 track album. I am releasing April 4th. By the time this is out, it will be out on all streaming platforms and on YouTube. SoundCloud, Bandcamp, all those types of things. In the end, what I wanted this album to be was an anger more focused and knowledgeable. I tried much harder in the recording process. I didn't just do one take and paste it like that. And the lyrics, they have a lot less of the teenage angst type of vibe. Um, they're more focused, they're more informed. And I just want to walk you through my album, Fear Mongrel, uh, one track at a time, starting with the first track. The first track is the title track, uh, Fear Mongrel, and this is actually the very last song that I wrote. For each of these songs, I'm going to be playing a voice note that I made on my uh, phone, and it's basically the first evidence I have of this song in formation. I actually wrote the chorus of the song when I was in the airport in Florida, I think? I forget. I just had this chant going through my head and I didn't really have any meaning, meaning to it yet. Get low, get down low. And then when I thought about the rest of the songs, I thought this is a good chorus. So I made the song about what I th think a lot of the fear in America originates from. So in the lyrics I talk about how Christian nationalism and Christian figures in the US will stoke these fears and uh, scapegoat groups and they instill fear towards things that are esoteric and vague and very general so that in people's minds they can just direct that fear and anger towards anything and to them it's justified. For example, during the COVID lockdown, there was a lot of preachers basically telling their followers, don't wear masks, harass people who are wearing masks, who let their kids wear masks, because it's a sign of the devil, it's the mark of the beast, whatever. And now we have those same people trying to provoke violence against LGBT uh, people. So the second track, Centrist, this was the second or third song that I wrote and I, I made this one right after I put out my EP and I wish that I made it before I put it out so I could put it on. I actually have a demo where I recorded it in the style of my old EP and I figured I'll just save it for my next project which is also going to be punk political type stuff. It explains my frustration with people who take this both sides or just as bad approach. Uh, I've talked to plenty of people who they just refuse to acknowledge that far right activities are far more harmful and far more prevalent than radical 
extremist leftists, which in America there aren't really any. And when there are, the FBI gets involved and breaks up their group without them even realizing it. I had a dream, a violent dream. There was a civil war, I couldn't pick a team. On one side there was slavery, and on the other side they set me free. And this is basically, it's basically taking my argument to its logical extreme. Imagine there being centrists during a civil war about slavery, which I'm sure there were of during that time in the 1800s. Basically, my point of view was that people on the far right, they're advocating for violence based in racism and anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, basically any phobia or, or ism. And then people on the left, you have trying to protect all these groups. They're basically just, they're against fascism. They're against Nazi ideology. And so when people say, oh, they're both just as bad, to me, I just, I'm baffled, and people who say things like that, there, it feels like there's no way to convince them. I've, I've talked very long with some people like this, and it's just impossible. The third track, Raccoon Invasion. This song is an extended metaphor for homelessness in the US, and to me, I see a lot of parallels between how homeless people are treated and how wild animals are treated like raccoons which is why i called it raccoon invasion i, I reference things like uh hostile architecture like those park benches with the armrest in the middle so people can't lay on them or the uh on an underpass they put spikes on the ground so that people can't sleep there and it just feels very inhumane because where where are these people supposed to go if these are like the best spots or whatever and they're putting spikes and railings there so that they can't even sleep. Also talks about how po police will abuse them, not take them seriously, things like that. And of course the, the end of the chorus, profit over life, you can uh, easily figure out what that means. Braveheart Wannabe. This song I wrote after the insurrection. I'll get into later election day, which I wrote before the insurrection. Braveheart Wannabe. You can assume just based on the title, it's about what it's about. And it, it's a very sarcastic song. I write it from the point of view of someone who would be on the far right who supports Trump, blah, 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 blah. The freedom to hate, choices mine to make, I own my own fate, your life I will take. It's about this entitlement that people on the right have that I can have my freedoms, but I don't want you to have your freedoms, and I will threaten you if you fight for your freedoms. And and a lot of these these hogs, they talk about uh, electric boogaloo and and race wars and civil wars, but they they don't even get off their couch to wipe their ass. Braveheart wannabe, I feel like, is a good nickname for people like that who who talk a lot of trash online. And then when they actually do something, it turns out like the insurrection, which was like the most pathetic insurrection. I'll tell you what, if Antifa was half as strong as people on the right make them out to be, their insurrection would have been so much better and it wouldn't have just been a bunch of like middle-aged white people taking selfies in the capital. Anyways. The next track is Algorithm. This one, I felt like the tech industry and like social media and stuff, it needed its a very specific song in my head. And so I made Algorithm. And that's basically just about how over encompassing um, social media algorithms are, like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And also how these algorithms kind of push people further and further into the depths of whatever weird ideology that they might find themselves surrounded by. For example, there's this there's this notion of an alt-right pipeline on YouTube. On Facebook, there's so much misinformation about everything. It was terrible during uh, the pandemic. I heard people my age were spreading insane things like that. There's of course QAnon, which started in 4chan and it just blew up from there. And, and I, t I just talk about how these, these algorithms exploit our natural desires. It uh, 
is damaging because you're getting too much of it's too much dopamine hits uh, you go on TikTok, you see a cute dog and then you scroll down one video and it's like someone poking a dead body with a stick this is not normal things for us to see and this is this is actually maybe my my favorite song on the album just the composition of it i'm, I'm really proud of it's a very strong song compositionally songwriting wise The Plague. So The Plague, I actually wrote, I wrote like half of the lyrics in 2019 and then COVID happened and I added the other half. I couldn't really tell what the lyrics were about before I added the second half, but I realized, wow, these, co these lyrics really line up with this whole COVID situation. Guided by the shepherd of a slaughterhouse into the blood-soaked walls to be painted and lulled into a piece, a culmination of the dejated and breaths of pace. And I felt like that was just a perfect metaphor for people getting misled by misinformation. And then I added later, December 25th, Christmas, that's funny. December 25th of 2020, the plague has followed us home, the mold is setting in the cracks of the bones. Soon the cement sinks in overgrown, our sins are that for which cannot be atoned. And I actually wrote the, the musical part around the time that I wrote the first section of the lyrics. And then when I added that second, second section, I composed it more, I added a bridge, I changed the melody, I put it on a seven string instead of a six string. And that's how you got the plague. Election Day. I wrote this song and recorded it right after I did Centrist, which I did right after I made the EP. And this one, I think this is the strongest song which is why I released it as a single. It's not too long, it's very energetic, makes you want to mosh. And Election Day, you don't need to get too deep into it, because just based on the title, you can assume what it's about. It, it, it's just about, you know, if I win the election, it's a fair election. If I lose the election, it's not a fair election. It was, it was around the time when there, all the political ads and stuff were running, and, you know, Trump was riling people up saying, oh, this isn't a fair election if I lose. And then later, the insurrection happened. So I feel like this song is like a premonition for this. The next track is Death by Taxes. Give, give me liberty or give me death. No taxation without representation, blah, 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 blah. All those types of things. And so this, this song is kind of like me telling the listener where tax money goes the the second half of the first verse i say taxes fund apartheid regimes they buy guns and death machines they invest in the police they don't care what we might think and then the chorus do you like the murder do you like the war do you trust the system do you want to know more so the the first verse is explaining where the tax money goes how we don't know exactly where it goes but we can see where it goes and things like the police and apartheid regimes second verse i talk about the wealth gap how a lot of normal people's taxes will go to subsidies of these huge corporations bailouts for banks for wall street the, the richest people and corporations are the ones who paid the least amount of taxes percentage wise and they're the ones who abuse the system so and uh, with with the songwriting aspect of this song i wanted to make a song that was based around an augmented chord so you can hear in the verse that i'm playing power chords major thirds apart and i wanted the chorus to really uh kind of be like a black sabbath type of vibe Ratchet Effect. This was a really hard song to work out. I was listening to a lot of stoner metal type stuff, like stuff like Sleep, where it's like super slow and dark sounding. Funny, funny story, I actually wrote three verses for this song, but when I recorded, I just 
didn't record guitar and I didn't realize it until after I recorded the drums as well and the bass and I was just like this is too much this I, I can't redo this whole thing so I just I do this uh, like record scratch type moment at the end of the song interrupting it like it's a emergency message and I talk about at the time People were going crazy about the whole quiet quitting thing, and it was basically just CEOs blaming normal people for doing their job the way that they were hired to, because they're not paid enough to go above and beyond. So th this song is about something I read about called the ratchet effect with far-right movements in the government. Basically what it means is people on the far-right, they will slowly inch the government further, further, and further right on the political spectrum and basically things liberal institutions like the democratic party they don't really do anything to pull it back the other direction they just are trying to keep it where it is so over time it just gets further and further right and nothing changes like how a ratchet you you pull the ratchet and you hear the clicking and then it doesn't get pulled back in The last track, The Nights, this was actually the first song that I wrote and I didn't know it was going to be on an album when I wrote it. It was January 1st, 2018. I didn't record it until probably in like 2020, 2021. I remember COVID was happening um, and I was picking up clarinet, which is in the song. With my EP, I ended with a solo, just voice and acoustic, the energy's down. And it was about the forced assimilation of Native Americans. I wrote the lyrics originally as a metaphor for my depression and anxiety, which was really bad at the time. And revisiting it years later, I realized this could also easily be a metaphor for colonization. So the first chunk is, is this, uh, the knights move downhill, leave a village raped and plundered. On horseback they ride with swords and eyes to slaughter another asunder. It's, it's setting a scene of how these old European powers would just move into villages and towns, burn them down, take the women and children. Under the night I toss about sweating, when will they come to me? That's from the perspective of someone who would be getting raided, marauded, colonized. They rush in like the dark that flushes out the sun, dagger kisses at my neck, the tension is killing me. What the song turns into is this metaphor for how colonization works and how it's not just one and done, they go and kill everybody and colonization over, everything's fine. It, it's a process that takes course over this, the time of centuries. I mean, when when Europeans conquered um, Amer the Americas, all these Native American communities still exist. And it's a process of hundreds of years of assimilating people killing them, stealing their children, stealing their land, destroying their homes. I felt like a subject like that needed something more subdued. I actually, when I recorded this, I wanted to edit it later. And then I realized that I lost the software file. Uh, I was, I think I recorded it in Mixcraft. So basically all I had left over was a FLAC file of the entire song, so I couldn't remix it or anything. So that is my album Fear Mongrel, my thesis against America. It's 10 tracks. I'm going to be selling stickers and CDs. There's going to be links in my bio to a landing page that will take you to whatever streaming service you use so you can listen to it. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell, blah, 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 blah. Thanks for watching if you made it to the end.